Hey guys, Dave here at the Fly Shop. Uh, we're gonna talk today about uh, tight line rigging. Uh, people call this Czech nymphing, European style nymphing, 10 other names, high sticking, um, dapping. A um, lot of different names for it. There's even more rigs for it. Um, so uh, I'm gonna call them tight line nymphing because it's all essentially the exact same thing. The idea is no indicator. Um, and you are you're fishing basically under your your rod tip um, rather than casting and um, um, with an indicator or swinging a fly or something like that. Um, deadly, deadly, deadly short uh, short game kind of rig. A um, little different than what you're used to. I would highly recommend now going against. Um, some folks will just take a knotless tapered leader like you use well on your indicator rig and chuck that out there. It may work just fine. Um, you're going to notice um, since it's really thick diameter up top, um, 40 pound in most cases, um, that stuff's going to give you micro drag. It's going to drag your, your whole rig. What I recommend doing is starting with a, some kind of cider material. We carry this really cool stuff from Scientific Angler. This is hands down my favorite stuff made. Rio makes one too. Um, in my opinion, this stuff is, is superior, mostly because it's tri-colored. Everybody sees color differently. Um, and the Rio stuff was, was chartreuse and orange. Um, too brightly colored thing. I was tying amnesia this color together for years before this stuff came out. You, it works really well. I find that this white, this milky white color is really visible in I think more situations than the really bright stuff. So this milky white color, um, I love it. I think this stuff is, is key. I go orange to white and I go chartreuse to white um, for I'd say 70 to 80 percent of, of my cider needs. Um, and a cider is this. It's not it's not 30 feet of this stuff. A cider is a short little distance. You'll see all kinds of different setups. I've never really understood why you would throw 0x, a super long section of 0x out there. This whole operation should hypothetically in most situations be, um, unless you're sometimes lazy like I am, I don't like to re-rig all the time, so once in a while I will dip this in the water. Not very uh, good practice, you should re-rig. But, um, but this hypothetically is out of the water the entire time. Um, I go to a tippet ring off this cider material. Um, and the reason why I'm tying a tippet ring to this is because this is 0x. This is really thick diameter tippet, and you all know these, it's really tough to tie a good knot um, to say 5x or 6x, because we're gonna go from your cider to your lowest diameter tippet. We're not gonna bother tapering down like I would normally if I was gonna actually be casting, because I'm just dipping the, dipping the fly in the water. Um, I'm, not even, I'm not even needing to cast at all. So I'm going right to my lowest diameter um, tippet just to reduce that micro drag that we were talking about earlier. So that said, um, the next biggest question I always get is, well, how far do I put this from my bottom fly? Well, just like with your indicator rig, I wish I could just tell you it's five feet everywhere you go, and it would be the easiest job in the world if that was the case. Um, water's different. You have different bottoms. You have different currents. You have, um, you know, um, water's moving at different speeds. Um, different people like to put a different amounts of weights and things on their rigs. Um, so there's a million variables that go into this. Tight lining is a little easier because you actually feel um, your anchor fly, which is your bottom fly in most situations, you feel this bumping across the bottom, ding, 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 ding. Um, and it's really easy to tell um, a, a bump on a rock from a fish grab. So um, a lot of times you'll feel that way before if you're fishing with an indicator. This indicator won't even move a lot of times, um, but you'll feel it on a tight line rig. That's, that's where the huge advantage is. So this bottom one, I call it an anchor fly. I think there's a few other names out there for that. Um, and then these off, off of that, um, you can call them droppers, you can call them top flies, point flies, whatever you want to call them. Um, but I did this one a little differently. You can do this, I've, I've, did it, I've done it for years, where you just tie in line like you normally do. So if I just tied eye to eye, you know, um, tie to the eye of the hook and then say I tied a clinch knot off the bend of the hook, that's possible too. I started doing this because these two flies move independently. I feel like that top point fly or whatever you want to call it gets a little more play. Um, the other thing is, is I get this question all the time. People are like, well, doesn't it tangle up constantly? Never will tangle up. Absolutely not. Everything untwists perfectly when you do this. So how did I do that? I just tied a, another little section of, I'm using 5X all the way through. I tied another little chunk of 5X tip it on there with a blood knot. If you get really close in there, you can see it's a blood knot. Um, I burnt my ends, disregard that. But, um, <laughs> but for example purposes, not a big deal. Um, so I just tied a blood knot, very different from a surgeon's knot. A surgeon's knot won't give you this 90 degree um, 
this 90 degree here that I'm looking for. If you did a surgeon's knot, this is gonna be almost parallel with this and then you are gonna get a lot of tangling and this is just gonna wrap around this left and right. Um, with this setup, 90 degrees off with a blood knot is practically impossible to get this thing to tangle up. Um, so I highly recommend a blood knot. And then all I did is I just left one of my tag ends long. Cut the other one off and left one just long. So that's that's uh, that's how I do that. Now, how far do you put your bot, your anchor fly from your rod tip? Well, with an indicator rig, it's really easy just to put it wherever you want, and um, you know, short, you know, anything less than nine feet is easy. With a tight line rig, you're gonna know if you have too much line in the water because your rod's gonna be this high in the air. I have really bad shoulders from previous injuries, so I can't. I'm not even able to do that whole thing. I have to re-rig. For me, what's comfortable is is when I'm, when I'm doing my when I'm doing my actual uh, um, fishing, I like to keep my arm in like this. If I keep it out like that or anything like that, it gets really tired really quick for me. Um, rotator cuff surgeries and things like that. So I keep everything in tight um, like this. I feel like I can fish all day like that with no problem. So that said, if I'm right here and I'm keeping my sighter out of the water, I really need to be watching this, um, how much tippet I'm putting on off of this. Um, I definitely want to be bumping the bottom. Um, and at the same time, I don't want to, you know, have so much tip where my rod's up in the air or my my cider material is in the water. So that's the other advantage of having this tippet ring here. Um, you know, if I need to shorten this up, all I'd do is cut this off, shorten up to about where I think I need to be, tie that on there with a clinch knot. Um, nothing fancy. If I needed to go a little longer, it's a little more difficult. I would cut off at this bottom. This bottom fly here. And I would just have to re-rig. Um, I'd have to add some some distance between these two. Um, but that is about it. Um, so these tippet rings we sell from uh, Angler's Image. I would show this to people and they're like, no, I don't want a snap swivel. This is not a sweat snap swivel. This is a snap swivel holding 10 tippet rings. So if you look really close on there, you're gonna see 10 two millimeter tippet rings. Um, and I'll tell you this too. Uh, one thing that I've gotten I've started doing, and again, I, I take shortcuts. I'm, 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 I'm often a lazy fisherman. But um, if I do get in a situation where I need to cast just a little bit further, um, and, I, and I don't want to re-rig my entire thing and put a put an indicator on and things like that, what I what I've started doing was I cut this off here right at my contrast point, right between my white and my orange, and I'll tie another blood knot there, and I'll leave my tag ends a little long, just these little helicopter uh, blades sticking off the sides here. Um, when you're fishing like um, like um, relatively unweighted stuff, these heavy anchor flies wouldn't be the best, but um, for um, fishing like um, any emerger pattern or anything that doesn't have a whole lot of weight in it, um, you can actually use that as your indicator. Um, it works really well. Um, in, a, in a jam, it's not as good as an indicator. It, you can't cast and see that distance, but if you tied a knot right there, um, It'll, it'll help and, and grease it, you know, put mucilin on it or, uh, or some kind of floating on it. And um, you'll be able to see this contrasting point, these two little uh, tag ends hanging off here. One will be white and one will be orange, really noticeable. Um, I'll do that. That's a, cheat, that's a little cheat thing that I'll do. The other question I always get is how do you attach this to your fly line? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, on this rig, I don't bother with a fly line. I rig my entire reel up with maxima, 20, 25 pounds, whatever. Um, trout fishing you're probably not going to need a whole lot bigger than 20. I stick to a relatively low diameter. It's not in the water anyways. Um, this is just for when the fish run. Uh, fish runs. There are a few lines out there that are tight, um, you know, Czech nymphing or tight line European nymphing exclusive lines. They're level lines that are coated um, far as I can tell. Um, you're not casting the stuff. Um, Maxima works awesome and it's uh, priced uh, right um, for me anyways. So what I'll do is I'll tie a union on from my maxima to this, bam, real small, easy connection. Um, if you are fishing with a fly line, which I imagine most of you are, you're gonna notice this stuff is gonna, after several large fish, this thin, thinner diameter, this is zero X, this is the one size they make it in, um, which is a good, that's the size I want it in. But if you try to loop to loop this to your fly line, this eventually will start cutting into your fly line. So think about maybe looping a uh, butt section on there, um, you know, a loop to loop on your end of your fly line with uh, 40 pound um, maxima or amnesia or whatever you prefer. Um, and then attach it to this because it's not going to cut into the monofilament, but it will cut into the coating of your welded loop on your fly line. So keep that in mind. The easiest way, honestly, if you have a, if you have a dedicated tight line rig, which 
I would recommend having. Um, it's really it's deadly having a tight line rig and an indicator rig. That's 90% of what I'm carrying. If I'm carrying anything else, it's a dry fly rod. Um, but those two rods will get it done at 10 foot, uh, nine six um, generally, um, just for that extra reach um, on your rod. Um, but I would highly recommend a dedicated setup, and I would just uni knot your your butt material, your your butt section to your um, to your level line. Um, or Maxima, or you could probably try Slick Shooter or something like that too. Wouldn't be necessary. Um, you're not picking line up really up with it or casting at all. It's just for when fish run. Um, so that is that. Oh, I'll say one more thing. Um, so if you're going from trout to steelhead, because this is a deadly steelhead tactic as well, um, all you need to do is cut your 5x or your 6x off right at the tippet ring, put 2x or 0x or whatever you want on there. You're ready to roll. This part that's on that's on the end of your fly line really doesn't need to change at all, or you're not your fly line, but your, um, your running line or your maxima or whatever. Um, this part doesn't need to change. This stuff will last a long, long, long time. Um, this part right here, you just cut it off if you're going to go you know, fish for something else. Tie 2x on there, tie 0x on there, whatever you want to do. Um, so it's a really cool, dynamic uh, setup. The the um, Loon makes uh, rigging foams and things like that, where you can take like I could take this rig that I was just fishing some you know um, one foot riffles with, and I'm gonna go fish the six foot hole, but I'm gonna head back to the riffles afterwards. I'll take that I'll take that little section there, put it on my my rigging foam, and then when I head back there, you know, in, in the next 20 minutes or something, I'll just throw that one on there. Uh, and I'll have that. I'll have by the end of the day. I'll have at least four rigs on my rigging because <laughs> you change your depths constantly. There's never a set it and forget it. Unfortunately, I wish fishing was all five feet deep and it was just the same depth the whole way, same you know all that stuff. But thankfully, it's not that easy. Um, so uh, so yeah. So that's tight line rigging or European style check nymphing, whatever you want to call it. Um, that's basically the same. Um, this, there's, like I said, there's a million ways to do it. This is how I do it. This works. This works really well for me. Um, any other questions about it? Uh, don't hesitate to uh, give us a ring here at the fly shop, um, or uh, shoot us an email. Whatever the easiest way is to get um, for you to get a hold of us. Um, ask us any questions you may have about it, um, or any other topic. Um, be happy to uh, happy to help you guys out. And um, yeah, have a good rest of your Friday. I know I will. Thanks for watching. Yeah, no. So, for yeah.